that it comes to my mind. I don't think it's often thought about this way, at least in the field, but um, you know, because NAD is required for cells that are, have a really high energetic demand, like activated immune cells, for example. Activated immune cells require a lot of ATP for energy and a lot of NAD. Um, and if you think about like chronic inflammation, how you know you're, especially with, as you get older and you're unhealthy and with age, it get, you know basically it is it is sure. increasing. Yeah. If you're having more activated immune cells, is there any way to test if like the NAD like there's a triage where NAD is kind of being sucked away to these activated immune cells and like then your mitochondria are now suffering and you get like mitochondrial decay because because you're you're sort of shunting all this NAD to like take mm -hmm. care of you know what your body thinks is potentially an infection that could kill you, right. right? So there's probably some sort of evolutionary mechanisms at play that say, oh yeah, immune cells need this NAD more than mitochondria or something. I don't know. So it'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Do you follow what I'm saying? Where oh, I absolutely do. I, I think you're, you're probably right. Uh, been thinking along the same lines that as you get older, you're, you're losing the ability to make NAD, but you're also chewing it up. And right. the, as it gets worse and worse um, as you get older, the immune system is a big drain on NAD, uh, and actually so uh, is DNA repair right. with the activation of PARPs. And, and once you drain NAD a little bit, then your PARPs and your immune system won't work, but then they'll, they'll need more NAD uh, because you'll get more damage. And this is a positive feedback in a, in a bad way so that you, once you start to going down the NAD decline, the cells just start to need more and more and more with accumulating DNA damage. And that's what actually what happens in yeast cells, going back to those little critters, that we found that they became overwhelmed with damaged DNA and the sirtuins were overwhelmed. They had to go over and repair that genomic instability, the DNA instability. And one of the reasons old cells became sterile, which is a hallmark of yeast aging, is because the sirtuins are, are keeping the cells fertile back here, but they're so distracted by all this other DNA damage that's going on over here that uh, they lose their identity. And that's a theme that we've discovered is likely true in mammals as well, that accumulations of DNA damage distract the sirtuins from their normal job of keeping a cell um, with the proper gene expression and cellular identity. And we see the loss of cellular identity over time in mice at least. And our, what we're trying to do is to raise NAD levels back up so that they can fix the DNA damage, but also get back to where they came from and make sure the cell doesn't lose its identity too much. I didn't know sirtuins played a, a role, a direct role, and I guess they're regulating so many genes that they're playing a role in DNA repair and DNA damage. Well, that, they're one of the first proteins to get to a broken chromosome. Really? Yeah, we, we, we discovered that. Uh, it's a while ago. It was a, um, it was a cell paper in 1999, if anyone would like to look it up. Uh, Mills, uh, myself, and Garanti published that SIR2 goes to a broken DNA end and then helps recruit other proteins. Break, double, double, double. Really? So like, like, like gamma H2AX? So yeah. So the first thing that happens is gamma H2AX gets lit up on the break, and then within seconds, SIRT1 brings in HDAC1, re helps remodel the DNA and the chromatin so that it's ready for the repair proteins to come in. And without SIRT1 getting there, these other repair proteins are very inefficient. Interesting. I didn't know. But they're distracted. sirt should actually be right. regulating wow. genes That's elsewhere. That's really important to know, I think. Right, this is all part of um, my idea, my hypothesis called the information theory of aging is that we're really losing the information regulation over time. Mm -hmm. And all of these other things that occur, uh, such as telomere loss and mitochondrial loss and loss of proteostasis, as Andy would call it, loss of protein folding mechanisms, this could be upstream of all of that, that we, our cells lose their identity and don't turn on the right genes the way they did when we were young. But the trick is, how do you get everybody to go back and reset? And that's what right. we've been working on.